Hey. What's up? This is what we're going to be looking at for the next um, two hours. No, I'm kidding. I, you know, this is this is Virtual Boy. This is the first time I've played Virtual Boy ever. And um, I'm glad that I've never touched this garbage. So this is Wario Land on the Virtual Boy, and it's something that, you know, is apparently good. So I wanted to play it. And it's only, it's short too, so it's not like a, a really terribly long game. If you don't know what a Virtual Boy is, I will explain. But let's, let's see the intro. It doesn't look too bad in grayscale. Oh, that sound chip. Well done, Nintendo. 1995. Good job. Look at that Wario. Excellent! You know, there are a number of ways to play this. There are... Uh, other ways you can play it in 3D. Um, but, you know, it's it's better that we're playing it like this so we don't die. And there's, like, you know, parallax. Anyway, thanks again, Nari, for helping me out with this nonsense. But you need to... You need to see a commercial for the Virtual Boy. Came from the third dimension. Look at this. Its own voice. How how would this be appealing to someone? Legs. There's only one problem. It needs your eyes. Oh, no, I don't want it to have my eyes. This commercial scared me. See it now in 3D. That was the marketing. Now imagine you have a 3D system that you can't like properly advertise. He's the epitome of evil. <laughs> and he's on the prowl in the third dimension. Look at this. Wario. Was that a live action Wario? Oh, no. The one has gone 3D where evil runs deep and danger comes out of nowhere in the most incredible adventure ever seen on Virtual Boy. It's Wario yeah. Land, a 3D game for a 3D world. Wait till they get a load of me! <laughs> yep, that was original Wario voice. That was him. 1995 Wario. Not Charles. Um, so what I think is happening here is Wario is sleeping and has, like, a big snot bubble in his nose. Uh, it's Wario without a hat, which I've, like, never seen. I actually can't make it red. Can't even edit the red in. I think that's an airplane. I think something was in the distance. It's kind of hard to tell. Yeah. yeah it just kind of looks like a higher resolution Game Boy game. When you look at it like this. No, the color doesn't affect grayscale, so I can't do any of the color options I normally do in uh, XSplit. But, um... Well, there you go, now you have the story. A bunch of Wario's treasures were stolen, and... Now he's dead, and this is a hellscape of his own... ...of his own mind. But again, I'll show you, this is what, you know, this is the red that you're supposed to see. And again, there's a way to do this with parallax. 
like you can actually see some of the crust. But I'm, I'm not doing that. Because it looks terrible, and it tries to replicate like a 3D thing, and it doesn't work. Um, so this is like, yeah, Game Boy, uh, the original Game Boy had Wario games on it. Well, Game Boy and then Game Boy Advance. There was one on Game Boy Color too, right? Yeah, Mario Land 2 was on Game Boy Color, I believe. Big strong arm. Mario not wearing any sleeves so he can show the muscles. Wario Land 3. But yeah, this one's closer to the original, um, Wario Land on the original Game Boy, from what I understand. And my friend actually had a Virtual Boy, and I didn't play it, but I remember seeing it. I, I didn't want to. <laughs> but, um, apparently this game was, was very good, compared to the rest of them. Um, for those that don't know, and I'm sure there are several people here that don't actually know what the fuck a Virtual Boy is. So let me enlighten you a little bit. It was a 1995 release, I believe. Or was it 94? Oh, Jesus, I don't even know what the fuck year it came out. 95. Okay, so a year before the N64, Nintendo launches another system. I'm small now. And it was a VR headset, so the VR craze already happened in 1995, and it actually did have 3D, like it would display two different things to each eye, so you could see in 3D, kind of like the 3DS. Um, I say headset, but you actually had to keep it on a stand, and you had to, um... Second, I think I have to throw a, a, a lad at that cloud. Yeah. No, oh, not anymore. So it was 3D. But in order to keep the cost down, and to, um... ...make it feasible, they had to keep it two colors. They, but they figured, oh, Game Boy. They're like, Game Boy is successful, that only has two colors. We can- we can do this with Virtual Boy, we'll just make it red. Cause red is like VR. It'll be like, futuristic. Um, but it apparently, at one of the trade shows they showed it at, people were complaining of getting headaches within the first 20 minutes of using it. And, you know, headaches were common with the Virtual Boy. Even more so than the 3DS. And it was just this awkward thing that you had to, like, keep on a stand on a desk or something. And you had to... ...keep looking into the eye holes. Red LEDs were far cheaper back then. Oh, that's interesting, I didn't know that. Red was the only affordable LED color at that time. Wow, okay. So they saved on money on uh, multiple fronts there, but it just was too... I guess you can say in some ways it was kind of too far ahead of its time. Yeah, this is a Wario Land that still has lives, so bear with me while I get back into video games. I'll be fine. And again, this is only, like, a two-hour game. So I'm probably gonna be able to finish this in one stream. Um, tomorrow... I may as well tell you what I'm streaming tomorrow. Super Paper Mario. Never played it. I'm gonna be streaming it directly from the Wii, so I'm not actually, um... Some people like that game. You know, I, I've not played it. I've heard good and bad things. I've heard that it's better now in light of other games in the series. And that, um, when it first came out, people gave it some shit. Vinny, I, have you not played A Thousand Year Door? No, that was the last one I played. I just don't want to play Color Splash and Sticker Star and... And, um... Uh, Rub... Rub Monsters, which was an, a f very underrated Mar Paper Mario game. Vinny, do Mario and Luigi instead. 
Well, no, 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 you see, I, I said I was gonna be streaming Paper Mario. That's, uh... That's the difference there. Eventually, I'll stream another Mario & Luigi game. But this isn't really, um... You know, the thing about this game is it's not entirely an RPG. Which is appealing to me. I know it's it's got like a story and I'm gonna end up reading. That's okay. That's fine. But I'm I'm interested. I've always wanted to play the game. It was just too expensive. I didn't have money for it when the game came out. And so I always waited for, for it to drop in price and by the time it did, I didn't care anymore. Hey, they did a pretty good job with the sprites in this game. Um... But anyway, okay, so let's let's go on about the virtual. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll talk about Paper Mario and Mario and Luigi and all that stuff. But um, yeah, Virtual Boy had like a tennis game. It had a couple other little things that weren't anything special. It had like a a space shoot game. There's tons of video retrospectives about the Virtual Boy, Mario Clash, which apparently was pretty decent, which was kind of like an updated version of. Um, of, uh, the Mario Brothers arcade game. So it wasn't all trash, it's just the console itself was so awkward that people didn't want to play it. The Waterworld game? Oh boy. Minigame? Okay, so we're doing, uh, 3D minigames. You're, you're not gonna get the 3D effect, and neither am I, obviously. But. Good. I couldn't even fucking tell what was happening. I think I lost. Vinny, do you have red, blue 3D glasses? No. There is an option for that. But, uh, no. I won coins. Greed is good. Vinny, can you enlarge the screen? It seems a bit small. Um, I can try, yeah. I think I can do that. I, I don't want to change my screen. Because, um... Let me get into a level first. Because I got the resolution in such a way that it, it it's, uh... There we go. It's a little bit better, right? So, uh... Yeah, the game doesn't look terrible when you put it in Game Boy mode. It's just designed for red. So it's one of those situations where... <laughs> it is meant to be played on the Virtual Boy, if you can fucking stomach two hours of it. Of it. But, I, I don't know, I kind of feel like this is fine. Sure, there's some 3D moments, but overall this game isn't, like... You know, it's, it's not pushing the bar barriers, the boundaries of 3D. It's just kind of doing its own thing. Um... Right, so... Anyway, Virtual Boy flopped for a number of reasons. Uh, PlayStation came out in 1995. People were still playing their Super Nintendo. Nintendo 64 was coming out. The marketing was fucking terrible, as you saw. Uh, word of mouth was not positive. I mean, my friend had it and was like, Vin, don't get it. Not that I wanted it, but he told me not to get it. And it was kind of expensive, too. Um, this was, um, Gunpei Yokoi. This was his brainchild. Gunpei Yokoi was, I believe, in charge of the Game Boy and the Game & Watch series. So he was the, the dude that was, like, really good with hardware. And, um, after Gunpei Yokoi... Um, he created both of those things, but after Gunpei Yokoi, um, realized that this thing was a flop, he just kind of quietly left... ...Nintendo. 
and then uh, sadly there was like a, apparently a tragic car accident like a year later. That was you know, it's just fucked up. You know, that's a shame. Um, didn't Gunpei Yokoi have something to do with Metroid as well? Or am I thinking of someone else? Was Metroid his brainchild? Yeah, it was. So, I mean, dude was legendary at Nintendo. He had a lot of projects that were both successful and... ...influential. But then, the Virtual Boy happened, and it was pretty much the end of his career. He did make the Wonder Swan. Yeah, I remember hearing about the Wonder Swan in magazines. Damn it. Um, I also want to point out... ...that... I believe the Virtual Boy was rushed... ...as well. Rushed out the door. So they didn't really have time to do a lot with it. And there was only like 20-something games on it, am I correct on that? Oh, this game has a run button. Oh, thanks. Vinny, there was like 11, 12, 15, 14... Between 10 and 15 games were on the Virtual Boy. 24 in Japan, 10 in America. Got it. Anyway, let me, let me platform better. This does play like Wario on GBA. Uh, on Game Boy, regular Game Boy. You know, Mario Land 3, whatever they were calling it. And, um... That's got its own... style. But yeah, there's a lot of videos. If you want to watch more about the Virtual Boy, you, it, there's so many video essays about this goddamn thing. Fat bots. <laughs> a little bit of nostalgia. throw this directly up. So, you just automatically pick up the lad. There we go. The AVGN video, yeah. I don't remember the AVGN video on Virtual Boy. I've seen it. I know I have, I just don't remember it. Did it attack him? And did he say something about diarrhea? That's my question. Yes? Alright, cool. No and yes. Oh, it didn't attack him. This thing is ass! I think I missed secrets. Um, but this game has some innovations, aside from the fact that... Oh, there's the alligator hat. This game definitely tried a couple things, like the, the background thing. They did that in Donkey Kong. You know, Paper Mario did that. So this was like the first game to do background foreground. Oh, I'm sorry, Dragon Hat. I don't know why I said alligator, what the hell? Mutant Muds. Yeah, there's a number of games that have done this since. There's a treasure. Vinny, it looked like an alligator in the Game Boy game. Oh, that might be what I'm thinking about then. Because when I played it originally, I think I thought it was an alligator hat. So, I've noticed a lot of people in chat showing up and saying, this actually looks like a good game. And I think the surprise is just because the words Virtual Boy, you just associate with ass. And yet, not all was ass in Virtual Boy Land. And if the show Captain N had continued, Virtual Boy would have been a major character. And would have fought with Game Boy, probably. Seems like you can just gamble all the time. 
See, I don't even know where that thing is. In a 3D space, it would make more sense, I guess, but... So that diamond isn't more points? Because that looks like a big diamond. You hit the bat. You missed it. Oh, okay. It is, but you hit the bat. I, I get you. Okay. Damn it. Whoa! Oh, I'm rich. I can go back and play more. More gambling game. Oh, wait, no, I can't. Next level, I can. So, yeah, you can see this is the whole game. Those are the levels. Which, you know, I don't mind a short game. If it's good. And some of the uh, Game Boy stuff, like some of the Game Boy uh, Mario stuff was, was really short. The water controls are not terrible, actually. Similar to Mario, but a little tighter, even. Um, but yeah, imagine, like, you know, your Virtual Boy comes out, and you get this fucking thing. You spend however much it costs when it came out, and the best game for it is Wario, and you're really happy, and you're excited. You're like, oh shit, Wario. I'm gonna play that. And then you beat it in one sitting. And then your Virtual Boy just goes to waste. Yet again. Like, you spent all your allowance. You did the lawn for a week. You did the- yeah, you did the lawn for, um, a week. Wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. For four weeks. Four full weeks of lawn. And laundry! And then you get a Virtual Boy. Actually, that's still too good. Um... Eight weeks. Eight weeks. Two months. Also known as two months. Eight weeks of lawn and laundry. And then you get a Virtual Boy. And then when the Nintendo 64 comes out, you're... They're like, your parents are like, no. No, I can't, we can't give you that. We got you... We got you the Virtual Boy. These things are supposed to last five years. Just play your Virtual Boy, honey. We got you that other Nintendo. No! And then you wake up from the dream, and it turns out you're just... You know... You're fine. Everything's okay. You're off making sneakers someplace, you know what I mean? Oh, thank God I didn't have a Virtual Boy. Huh? Well, you, no, you're making your own brand of sneaker. That's what I'm talking about, like your, um... An entrepreneur. You're an entrepreneur. In this scenario. Vinny, it was $180 at launch. Now, adjusted for inflation... ...from 1995, what is that? Like, about... two two ninety, three hundred, three hundred dollars $300? At least $14,000. Also, people are saying this game is loud. Doesn't sound- no, it doesn't sound loud on my end. Maybe it was just like a scummy noise. It's possible it was just a scummy noise. The key noise is loud? Oh, I see.
Hey, welcome to Nick Arcade. All right, now check this out. If you win at Nick Arcade today, you can choose one of two prizes. Oh, I'm so excited. What do I get to win? You get to choose the brand new Nintendo game console. Hasn't even come out yet. You will get it a week early with every game on the system. The Virtual Boy. Explore strange new worlds in 3D. Oh man, that sounds awesome! Or... You get a trip to Cabo San Lucas for you and your whole family for one week. I want the Virtual Boy! Are you sure about that? Yeah! One day later, your eyes burning as they try to focus on the horizon that is your backyard. There is no Cabo San Lucas. There was no vacation. Virtual Boy has stolen your eyesight. Your parents have disowned you. Um, so I missed the treasure. I don't know where that treasure is. Oh. Oh. Couldn't you, like, use your horns to stick in ceilings? In, um... Wario Land on Game Boy. Super Mario... Super Mario Land 3, so Wario Land original, yeah. Oh. Look at all these secrets. There were a lot of warnings, yeah, there was a booklet that came with the Virtual Boy that had, like, a page and a half of warnings, and it scared people away from it. Not like that commercial didn't scare people away from it, too. Somehow I got the diamond. Feels pretty good. Don't know how it happened. I'm not even- no, we're not doing those diamonds. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I got one, I'm not- no need to be greedy. Even though that's Wario's whole thing. Nice. Sure do love me some gambling. Remember when I said I wasn't gonna be greedy? Oh, what the fuck is your problem? Salad. Oh, 
Oh shit, real boss. This thing confirmed for Smash. That's so fucking scummy. Vinny, try this with a VR headset. No, 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 I'm good. I don't have one anyway, anymore. And yeah, there's more 3D in this than I thought there would be. Yeah, I had a, uh, Oculus dev kit too, but I don't have... I mean, I still have the item, but I don't have some of the cables for it, I don't think. I've, uh, misplaced them, or I just don't care. It's- it's an old, crusty Oculus, so I don't really want to use it anyway, because it, it- it hurts. What are you using to play this game? Bizhawk. I mean, uh, a, a real virtual boy. A second here. Okay. I'm good. So, very distinct pattern. Mr. X. This is this game's Mr. X. I mean, I'll bet that looked cool as fuck in virtual headset, even if it did look red and stupid. I bet the 3D was was pretty cool. Because imagine never seeing something like that before, never actually seeing a 3D game. And then, you, you know, you get in there and it's like, oh wow. You know, one screen for each eye. How did this not get remade on 3DS, someone said. I'm wondering why this game was never re-released. Maybe they just really want to forget about the Virtual Boy. But I feel like they could have released this for five bucks. And made some money off of it. The Virtual Boy is in the other vault with the CDI Zeldas and Hotel Mario. Oh yes, the Phillips. Nintendo was like, yo, 
They were like, yo, are we gonna bank on Sony? Or are we gonna bank on Philips? And everyone was like, uh, Sony. And then... John Nintendo was like, no, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. These Philips people seem to know what they're doing. Let's just give them Zelda. I believe Gaming Historian has a video about the, um... The worst mistakes Nintendo made. He did a video about the worst mistakes that Nintendo made, and also the worst mistakes that Sega made. One of which was the, um... For Sega, it was the, the launch of the, the Sega Saturn four months earlier than it should have launched, because the president of Sega freaked out. And, um... It, like, screwed everything up. That, and also releasing the 32X so soon. And, and Sega, well, Sega made so many mistakes, they're no longer in the hardware game, but... Sega, oh yeah, Sega also had a potential deal with Sony that they fucked up, too. Releasing 32X at all was a problem. I think the 32X would have been cool in 1993. <laughs> like, as an incremental upgrade, it, it kind of had potential. It could have been cool. But it was weird, and they did, like, sexual advertising with it. I remember very little of those days. But I do remember weird magazine advertisements from both Nintendo and Sa from everyone. Everyone was doing weird fucking advertisements. Like the Virtual Boy was advertised on a piece of paper on a page like, "Hey you, yeah you, look at this shit. It's fucking crazy." Nineties marketing was weird. The other guys don't have this 3D. The other guys don't have this power. You want to be lame? Huh. Do the math. It's in the dick. And then there was also, um... Do you remember the Sega... Uh, the, the Sega... The fucking Atari Jaguar commercial? Where they were like... I remember that it was the... I've seen the commercial recently, because, again, Gaming Historian is a good channel to binge when you're trying to sleep. Or trying to, uh... Just not do anything. But... The... I gotta show you this, this Jaguar commercial. If anything, it made me hate the Jaguar. Because the the person, the, the like the lady who was teaching the class was like Some so unlikable. It it made me not want to go anywhere near a fucking Jaguar. Jaguar. Some of you believe your system is the most advanced in the universe. Look. Let's review the numbers. Sega Genesis is 16 bits. 3DO is 32 bits. The Atari Jaguar is 64 bits. Which is more advanced? Clifford! Hmm? 16 and 32 are less than 64. So with 64 bits, 3D graphics, real world animation, and lightning speed that you can only get with Jaguar? Which is more advanced? Clifford! Can you repeat the question? Jaguar! 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 Don't you want it? What, you didn't do the math? Asshole, what, you like Zelda? You fucking idiot. That's what that commercial was... ...implying. You like Sega? You like Sonic? You're a fucking dumbass. Sorry, I don't mean to be aggressive, it's just that's, that's the... That's what I got out of that commercial. What were they thinking? Sorry, they're good. I mean, I have a Jaguar. Someone gave me a Jaguar at a fucking convention. I streamed it. I have done a stream of Jaguar. Wow. 
when? Um, when was that, like a year ago? A little over a year ago, maybe. Or maybe less than a year, I don't know. Time doesn't make any sense. As Matthew McConaughey once said, time is a flat circle. But Nintendo was not above the, uh, trash ad. They would... They would, uh, shit on the competition, too. Again, I don't remember the ads being like, the other guys are stupid, until Sega came along, but that's just me. That's just me. It got real, like, scummy in, in the, um... Around the, like, the early 90s, I feel. Secret of Evermore ad was real weird. I don't remember it. Whoa, what is this? This wasn't in Wario Land on the Game Boy. Someone said you can fly with it? Then he missed everything? I thought maybe it would make me go back. Hey, numbskull! Do you like other video games other than Atari Jaguar? Hey, fuck face. Do you want to play the best console? Oh, you can kind of fly. Fuck. Hey, you can hover. Hey, hey, fuck face. Do you like Sega? Well, Nintendo's here to tell you that you can go fuck yourself. Good, good advertisements. Thanks, guys. Th thank you, early 90s. Uh, I'm good. I'm good now. Sorry. I just needed a moment. Someone said, why is this not on the Virtual Console? Um, I don't know. Like I said, my, my whole theory about this is that Nintendo doesn't even want to, like, think about the Virtual Boy. Like, notice the Virtual Boy is not a trophy in Smash, or a character in Smash. Like, they could easily have that Virtual Boy commercial. If Virtual Boy was a huge success, you know, like, the Chicken Walker Virtual Boy. <laughs> Excuse me. From that commercial would have probably been a character in Smash, like Rob the Robot. Virtual Boy was acknowledged in Tomodachi Life, and there was some Virtual Boy stuff in WarioWare. Oh yeah, that's right. I guess they're not, like, totally forgetting about it. I bet someone at Nintendo was real fucking pissed when they snuck those in there. Nintendo doesn't want to code an entire emulator with 3D support for literally one game. Now that's a good, that's a good answer. Um, I mean, they could, they could borrow some code. I know where they can get some code. All the legwork has been done already.
I mean, the legality of such a thing is highly questionable, and they probably don't want to have anything to do with that. They probably don't want to even acknowledge the fact that someone has made it in... M-M-U-M-U-Late... What do they call them? I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know about that stuff. So I get a sense that this game isn't a long game, but that you can spend a lot of time in the levels. Um, also the 3D would be nice to see what the fuck is a background object and what isn't. That's one thing I've been having a little bit of trouble with. Also, Chris D'Elia's Eminem impression. You know, the one, here's some Ford on the floorboard. So he did another one recently, and just like two hours ago, or an hour and a half ago, Eminem made a tweet saying, I couldn't tell this wasn't me. He's like, I thought that was me. Good job. And, and uh, so now it's, you know. So that's happening. Well, yeah, now it's- now it's dead. Now- now- Now it's dead. And it's like, made news and stuff. It's not like I didn't run it to the ground on the stream for the past four months, but, you know, now it's dead. Using way too many napkins. I'm sorry, anytime napkins or Harrison Ford comes up on the stream, it's gonna happen. I don't make the rules. Everybody knows the rules. fuck is this treasure? Also, can you complete the game without all the treasures? No. <laughs> yes, but, uh, oh, you need them for the good ending. Oh, right, stamina. If you're lack- yeah, if you're lacking the stamina, that's also a problem. Like, if you run out of stamina in a video game... That's always- yeah, that's gonna be a problem. I'm gonna have a hard time not thinking about that. Fuck is this treasure? Rario, R Rario, why would you do this to me? Oh god. Sorry if I'm a little tired. Today was, uh, today was a nice day, though. The weather was good. I mean, it wasn't a nice day. It was still filled with anxiety, but you know how it is. No, it was- the, the weather was so nice. It was like 64 degrees. Which is... Like, after what we've been having, that was like fucking summer. D 
I mean, do the math like Atari Jaguar would tell you. Can you translate that to Celsius? Um, 14. There it is. God damn it, this isn't it either. I don't know what that is, Celsius. Fourteen is fifty-eight. Oh, I was close then. Okay. Um, so it was about sixteen degrees Celsius. Uh, yeah. Sixteen or seventeen. Good. See? I did the math for you. This level sucks. Someone in chat is holding out information. They know where this fucking thing is. Oh. Welcome to Wario Land, where you have to just destroy every... You just have to destroy everything and hope for the best. Vinny, do you really think anyone here has played this? Actually, yes. There are a number of people in chat who said they, they have played it. Do you believe them? So one of them had specific informations. Every in information that could be furnished upon me. Someone said go all the way right for the treasure. I don't know if I believe that. Going back to the beginning, I guess. Go back to the secret you were just at. You could probably burn the tree there. That's what I thought, but I mean, who knows? These treasures. This is gonna give me a fucking conniption by the time I'm done with this game. Of course, when you go on to uh, howlongtobeat.com, it says two hours, but then, like, if you keep scrolling down, it says how long for Vinny to beat, and it's just double that. This is definitely it, right here. This has to be it. Everywhere else has been burned, pillaged, sacked, plundered. Dumb, thick asshole Wario. I mean, they give you a massive time limit. Yeah, speaking of time. No, I have to get back up there in six minutes. Yeah, sorry about the yawning. Be one of those days.
I almost, um, I almost streamed Paper Mario tonight, but it just doesn't, I don't know, I wasn't feeling like starting two new games in one night. I wanted to see how this went before I did Paper Mario, Super Paper Mario. Wait, I really can't get up there without the fucking eagle hat? I'm good. There's one eagle left on the top of that one area. Here's the thing, though. Yes, there was an eagle over there, but do, would the game really require you to use the eagle hat like you'd need it? to the ladder. Alright, so here's the ladder. Okay. And now I need to get over there. But I can't jump that far. Vinny, jump on the bush? There's an upper path. Okay. Four minutes, twenty seconds. Here we are again. This isn't even me ba being bad at video games. I mean, it is, but it's more me being bad at navigation. this area. Well, here's the eagle. <laughs> that was at the top of that one area. I got so fucking confused on this level. I am... very happy it's over. Pretty alright at grabbing those diamonds. <laughs> Fucking barely tell where things are spatially, but. Decent enough minigame. But yeah, that's the thing, like, the Virtual Boy was just ahead of its time and was red. Uh, but the, you know, there's some nice ideas in there, which would later come back on the 3DS and then... ...the VR craze of... Wherever we're at now. And goodbye, money. Don't 
Oh, I missed! Or if you prefer, OH MY GOD! No more water. That was bad. I like that hat. I like when Nintendo advertised the Virtual Boy as portable. Which is technically correct. But also kind of a dick move. Portable like the GameCube? Dude, GameCube had a handle. Oh my god! Sorry. I can't help it. Has anyone here ever stored money or, um, cush inside their GameCube? Because there were like little pockets in there. No, officer. Oh, alright. I'm- um, listen! It's legal now in some places. The amount of people that have actually stored Kush in their GameCube, though, is probably a very high number. Judging by the reaction in chat alone. Stop calling it Kush. The cops won't know if I call it Kush. Shh. I'm using a code word. Hello, fellow children. It is I, your fellow, your fellow child friend, Vinny, from Vine Sauce, and I'm here to tell you that drugs are bad, and you shouldn't do them, but you should definitely call it Kush, so that way no one will know what you're smoking. Hey, it's me, Cool Cat! And I want to give you a PSA! Don't hide Kush in your GameCube! Cool cat's a narc. Definitely. Hey, what are you doing? You wanna hang out? Yes, cool cat. What are you doing today? Oh, you know, just smoking some drugs. Hey, that's neat. Give me five minutes to make a phone call and I'll be right there. Hey, what kind of drugs specifically? Can you say them out loud? God damn it, not again, cool cat. My name is Derek Savage, and I'll tell you, I never done the drug one time. One time, not one time. Wait, didn't Derek Savage 
Well, he wants to go Grink. He's all about the Grink, but my question is, didn't Derek Savage... Someone just said Derek Savage is starting the, um, 420 awards or something. It's an award show for pot? Do we need that? Give me a second here. I don't believe this. Why am I talking about pot while I'm talking about a virtual boy? This is weird. Derek Savage. Oh, right. GameCube. Uh, Derek Savage 420 awards. Oh my god, he is. Hello, everyone. Hi, I'm Derek Savage. You know, I can't actually show this video because um, he is very litigious and likes to content claim so I'm not going to show you the whole video, however, I'm going to show you this. Yes, we're, we're making one of the most spectacular and entertainment fulfilled What? Award show ever. Now here is our, our award right here. This okay, wait, wait a minute. This is, this can't be real. What is this shit? What is this abomination of green screen? This is the mock. This is the first one right here, mock. And, um... It's a midi of then I got high by Afro Man. And I think it looks pretty cute. What do you think right there? And also, here is our poster, the 420 Awards. Cool Cat says, smoke lots of weed! But only if it's legal in your state and you're of legal age. Do the math! I thought that was a joke. How is that real? Is, so, is it an award show about the best weed, or like the person who smokes the best weed, or smokes the most weed, or sn just Snoop wins every award? What's happening here? All of that? Sure. All right. I can't believe. <sighs> I'm good. No, I'm fine. I'm just... I'm in disbelief still. Yeah, that was pretty cool. A nice little set piece. Yeah, this game is good. Yeah, can we put the dress on Mario, please? It's for the Wario princess that was never developed. Princess Barf. Yeah, 
getting some cave story flashbacks. Damn it. Did, uh, which, which R&D team made this? Does anyone know? Was it one, two, or three? Or four, or five, or six? This, this, was it three? R&D one made this? D1 was the Wario Land games. Okay, well, yes, it's confirmed R&D1. Yeah, the development, like, obviously they put some effort into this. Like, the people who made this knew how to make a cool platformer. It's just a shame it was never re-released or remade. Also, using Wario to sell a console, what a fucking move that is. By 1995, I think Wario was only in, like, what? One previous game? Two? One as a villain? Oh, Wario's Woods. They used Luigi to sell the GameCube. Look how that worked out for them. Don't get me wrong, I love Luigi's Mansion as a series. I think um, Luigi's Mansion makes a better series than it does System Seller, or, you know, like a, a launch title. That's why I'm happy we're getting Wario, uh, Wario. More Wario would be fine too, but I'm happy we're getting Luigi's Mansion 3. Like, it's upsetting that Metroid Prime won't be in the holiday lineup. Kinda wasn't expecting it anyway. But Luigi's good. That's a pretty nice consolation prize. That... Plus whatever bonus game... Th apparently there's a game... What a shock. It's like the munchers from Mario 3, but even more crusty. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's gonna be a pretty good 2019 for Nintendo. But I don't... You know, and Metroid would have been perfect. Metroid would have been amazing. I'm still upset that we're not getting Metroid, but I, I will live. But, uh, Animal Crossing... I don't know if Animal Crossing is getting, um, a spring release, or if it's getting a holiday release. But, I think spring would be nice. And I think, you know, obviously Pokémon... We're double-dipping with Pokémon two years in a row as a holiday title. But this Pokémon will actually, I think, be something cool. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about it. Um, we still don't know about Bayo 3. Bayonetta 3 would be nice. Yoshi is going to be in a, like a couple, what, like two months? job. I don't know. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, Yoshi's coming out soon. That'll keep us busy, but, uh, then there was a tease that, like, Nintendo fans would be happy to hear about something coming out. 
Switch is gonna be, I think, good. But I'll be honest, I'm just waiting for the Outer Worlds. <laughs> it's not gonna be a Switch game, but... Um, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I do think Nintendo's gonna have a good year, but I also think that it's gonna be a little... I mean, there's no... I have to wonder, like, do people view Animal Crossing as, like, a killer app? Because I know it sells, and I know, you know, I love Animal Crossing, it's one of my favorite series, but I don't know if it's going to be viewed as such. Vinny, New Leaf still sells well in Japan. Still. That's cool. That update was nice. They really went above and beyond with that update. What could this mysterious game be, though, that if gamers- GAMERS! Sorry, we'll be pleased about. I have to wonder. I don't think it's gonna be anything like a surprise game, like, um... Like an F-Zero, or anything like that, or a Kid Icarus. I think it'll just be something kind of neat. Maybe a, a, a Pikmin would be great. Or Mario Maker would be nice. Mario Maker 2 or whatever. Um, yeah, something like that would be kind of cool. But then, you have to wonder, now that Retro... ...has Metroid Prime again... ...and we still don't know what the fuck they're doing... ...it begs the question, when are we gonna find out what they've been working on the past five years? This rumored Star Fox Grand Prix that still hasn't been revealed. So... You know, is, are they gonna... If they're gonna work on Metroid, you have to think they're gonna release whatever the fuck they've been working on this year. So they can devote their time and energy into, into Metroid. Right? It's a very confusing and worrying thing, and I don't know what's gonna go on with that. So, but, you know, it's not like, are they just gonna say, hey, by the way, this game is available after the convention? Or is it gonna be an issue of, like, well, it's a holiday game, and we're gonna have it compete directly with Pokemon. So there's, there's a lot of questions. I don't think we're gonna get these answers until E3. Um, I would imagine the next Nintendo Direct should be in the next month. We're overdue for one. We're spoiled. Here I am, though, just happy that Resident Evil 2 was amazing. Resident Evil 2, game of the year. Year hasn't even fucking started yet, really. Now, this year's not just Nintendo, though. You know, I'm, I'm into... What a surprise, I like Nintendo games. That is a shock, but... This year's got a lot of good stuff. Doom Eternal. Spelunky. Outer Worlds, hopefully. Maybe not. Um, I'm actually looking forward to Dreams on the PlayStation 4 at the moment. Because someone made me a pack of games that will... were just weird experiences on in Dreams that'll, you know, work. Hopefully, what, uh, when the game comes out. So I'm gonna buy that, like, day one, I think. Death Stranding? You think that's happening this year? Bubsy? Get out of here with that shit. <laughs> Get out of here. Oh, Hylix 2 is probably gonna come out this year. Speaking of, like, indie games, Hylix was... A fucking... 
how would you even describe Hylix? It, it was like an unforgettable trip into some land where nothing made sense. But yet, it was still glorious. It was just wonderful. And Hylix 2 looks even better. Cuphead DLC. That's gonna be cool. So how about that game that just came out called Heat? We've been talking about this a little bit. Desert Jeff and I and um, Sphinx and a couple, couple of lads. We've been talking about this Heat game where you can like Heat, not He. Heat is like a survival game where you can have children, and it, from what I've seen, it just looks like it. The type, okay, the type of game this is is just streamers and influencers and YouTubers. Assholes like me. <laughs> I mean that in the best possible way. Like, nice assholes, you know what I mean? Like, good assholes. But people like me who would play this game... It's YouTuber bait. You get to have kids in the game. You get to, like... I think you can get, like... You can have slaves in the game. You can, like, hang people for, like... You can put them on a cross. You can, like, burn witches. It's fucked up. It's a survival game that is less about survival and more about making crazy YouTube videos out of all the moments that you can you can do from it. And the graphics are so crusty. It's just one of those things that it feels like it shouldn't exist. But, they went for it. It's from the devs that made Reign of Kings. Now, Reign of Kings, I played, right? With Kraken? Is it that game where you could make, like, thick... ...like, knights with big fucking booty assholes? And, um... ...and, like... ...like, weird fucking Bluton faces? Yeah. Yeah, that was the one. It's the same buggy mess with more insanity. Yeah, I didn't really see much about the game, aside from... ...just a couple of, like, meme clips of... ...you know... ...the game looks... Yeah, it's bait. It's just bait. And yet it's somehow kind of tempting to want to jump into it and see what what it's all about, but I don't think I want to. I think I'm gonna pass on this one. Because there's gonna be, you know, there's gonna be a lot more Dong games. Remember Scum? There's just a game called Scum that came out. And it was like another Dong survival game. Vinny, you legit go up to other players to have sex and make a baby. There's a mini game where you wiggle back and forth dry humping. The game's Steam description has the phrase, Players lactate to breastfeed their newborns. Well, there you go. Now you got it. Now you know what's up. And it's just gonna get weirder, because, you know, with each, like, taboo that's broken down, like Dongs, for example... Now that Dongs are no big deal because of Conan, and Scum, and, and games like that... Like, with Dong sliders and shit, you know? Um, it's just gonna get more depraved and weird to attract the shock audience. You know, it's gonna be like, well, what can you do in this game? Oh, in this game? Oh, man, you can, like, you can rip out someone's asshole. In this game, you can watch Freddy Got Fingered while you finger Freddy. In-game.
Anyway, how about that Wario game <laughs> that I'm playing? Vinny, how do you like this game so far? I think this game is is a wonderful platformer. And once it gets going, it's it's fun. Some of the levels are a little bit that that one level I got stuck on, I didn't love all that much, but I think it, this is this is good. It's on par with the other Wario Land games I've played. Which, granted, it was only the first Wario Land game I played a thousand times. Some of Wario Land 2, and that was it. And, and a little bit of Wario Land 3. And Pizza Tower. I heard 4 was the best. You know... One day, you never know. But yeah, for as big as of a uh, as big of a Nintendo fan as I am, I haven't just like blindly purchased, you know, all their games. Like I said, I missed out on a lot of Paper Mario games, the Mario and Luigi series. Barely played the Wario series after two. Um, didn't play Shake It. I liked Wario Wear. Um, I I missed a lot of Mario sports games. Vinny, you would have bought them if you had the money then. Some of them, yeah, sure. Yeah. I missed a lot of Kirby games, too, like the GBA Kirby games. Magic Mirror. You... piece of crap. Piece of garbage crap. Damn it. It's weird, because Wario, in the opening cutscene of the game, you can barely see it, but it looked like Wario was like... You know, he had his hat off while he was relaxing, and he had hair. And now when he's, like, damaged, he looks like a little goblin with a mohawk. Someone said, wait, since when did the Wario Land... Ugh. <laughs> when did the Wario Land games have death? Wario Land 1 had death. And I guess this one did too. Wario Land 1 was much more similar to the, uh, Mario series. And then, in order to establish its own identity... ...they tried something a little different. You know, this- this right here? Oh, good! This is giving me Zelda 2 flashbacks. Kind of reminds me of something from Balloon Kid. If anyone remembers that game on the Game Boy, it was like a balloon fight um, platformer. That game was hard as fucking balls. I couldn't beat the first like three. I got to level three. That and Castlevania Adventure were the Game Boy games I owned that I just could never beat. Oh, and Alleyway. Alleyway was this breakout clone on the Game Boy that Nintendo developed. That was so boring and so difficult.
I know I'm just complaining now, but I, I was really... Like, some of the early Game Boy games that first came out with the console were not all that great. Like, Solar Striker. Just bare bones. Alleyway and Soli Stri <laughs> Solar Striker. Both clones of other more successful arcade games made by Nintendo that were just kind of boring. Didn't really do a whole lot to do anything interesting in the genre. Someone said I'm surprised at how short Kirby's Dreamland 1 was. 2 was such a huge step up. I will say this. I didn't have Kirby's Dreamland 2 on the GBA. Or GBA. Why do I keep calling it GBA? On the Game Boy. But I love Dreamland 1. That's another game I would just play over and over and over and over again. I didn't even care how short it was. I would just keep playing it. And at that time, Kirby didn't really have a lot of the abilities that made... that made the series... stick out. It was like, kind of also just starting to find its footing. Like, you couldn't copy any of the abilities. All you could do was... was suck and blow. God damn it. It's true, though. But the game was just really nice, and for Game Boy, it looked beautiful. And the worlds were memorable, the music was nice. That was one of my favorite games. Can I grab that one? Give me that one. Slowest pause screen ever. Gonzalo, I'm gonna have to ask you to go. I don't, I don't, know, what to f I don't know what to do. I can't pick up that melon. Do, do I take a small melon? Mario, why would you do that? Dickhead. Yeah, you know, gotta smash the melon button. <laughs> I gotta smash that melon button. Awesome. That's good, thanks, mate.
I like how Wario causes a girthquake when he ground pounds. Also, how, I love how Wario music is, like, kind of... ...distinct. Yeah, it's stanky. That's a good way to describe it. It's like stanky music. A little jazzy. Saxophony. Saxophonic. Yeah, brassy, there you go. Hey! Hey! Fuck face! Okay, we're good. Shigeru Miyamoto himself is quoted with saying, I wanted the Wario soundtrack to sound like farts. He said, this is a man who is flatulent and large, and therefore, the music had to reflect that. So we recorded the sounds of a number of members of our development staff um, expelling flatulence using various microphones, and then we just um, pitched them up or down, saw what worked, saw what didn't, and then found the instruments to correspond to that. I know because my uncle works at Nintendo, he told me all this. I mean, my uncle also knows Wario's cup size. Oh, I don't know it. My uncle knows it, he never told me. Oh, I missed! Why would you throw that? Stop! God. required for this. It's so- it's so specific, you have to have, like, you just have to memorize the visual cue. Stop. Then you missed a secret door? Really? Where? for the conveyor belt. Imagine seeing the commercials for the Virtual Boy. Where you're like in a fucking Terminator futuristic war zone. And they're like telling you it's the most immersive console experience of all time. And then you play it and this is the music you hear.
you're like, oh. Well, I guess Nintendo really is for babies. And then you don't buy an N64, and then you don't buy a GameCube. I already know I fucked that one up. Oh, this door. How the fuck did I miss that? And then you buy a Wii, and then get burned by Nintendo so you don't buy a Wii U. You only buy a Wii because of Twilight Princess and because you wanted to see what the Wii Sports motion shit was all about. And then you're like, alright, well, you know, this is cool for about three months, and then you just... Then you get Brawl, you play some Brawl for a little bit. And then your Wii collects dust. You, you don't even know what a Wii U is, you think it's an add-on. And then they release something called the Nintendo Switch, and then you maybe get that. And then you realize, like, oh, Mario's actually still kind of fu kind of fun. My friend, um, one of my friends, friend Tyler, had, like, a Super Nintendo. That was the last Nintendo system he had. And we played, you know, we played some stuff on Nintendo stuff before. Like, we played Smash Brothers, Mario Kart. So he's not that he doesn't like Nintendo, he just isn't into the type of games. Like, he likes story-focused games. He likes games that have... I don't know... Themes... I... I <laughs> so for him, Nintendo never seemed like the game, uh, like the system... ...to get. Like, he liked it when he was younger, but then he just thought, like, well... I don't really... I'm not into this, so I don't- I don't want this. Switch comes out. He gets one. Gets Zelda. Really likes it. Gets Mario Odyssey, says it's one of the best games he's ever played, says he misses how fun collecting stuff was, and he... Like, he couldn't believe how much he enjoyed Mario Odyssey. He got, like, almost every moon. Um, he's got Smash Brothers. You know, he's he's got a bunch of indie games. I think he's working on, um... I told him to get Octopath Traveler, if he wants, like, a story-focused game, but I don't know about that. So, that was kind of cool. I thought that was nice. It's, again... There's something about Nintendo games that are kind of just dumb thick. They're just elemental in their, uh, dummy- sorry, dummy thick. They're elemental in the way you enjoy them. It's like just the fun of jumping around as Mario in that world. It was kind of good enough, you know, like it- It's just fun to play as Mario. Wow. And it's not that PlayStation doesn't have that. Like, I think Spyro's really great. And I think, um... You know, it's possible to have that Nintendo feel from a lot of games that aren't made by Nintendo. But it was also kind of cool to see someone come back to the system. But that's the other thing, too, like, he was right to stay away from certain consoles. I don't think he would have liked the Wii U, for example. So it was, like, a good... It was good timing to get the Switch and to stay away from, like, the Wii U. Or even the Wii, really. I mean, even the Wii had Galaxy, and there was some great stuff on the Wii, but for someone who was, like, not really into Nintendo stuff, I don't think that stuff would have won him over. Oh yeah, Twilight Princess. Well, he's not a Zelda, you know, he's not really into Zelda. He is now, but he never really played Zelda. I told him to play Link to the Past, see if he likes it. Well, he was into Mario 64, he had played that. 
but yeah, I've had to like kind of say, all right, which Zelda games would you like? I think he would like Twilight Princess, like the the more story focused games. But I still feel like Link to the Past is a really nice introduction into the world of Zelda. Majora. Yeah, Majora would be nice. Because, well, that's more character focused. Wind Waker has a nice little story. But if you're going for like a story focused series, Zelda has story, but it's not, you know. Yeah, not the forefront, exactly. Um, so someone in chat just wrote in, uh, in quotations, Men who like story games surprised that gameplay is fun. Essentially that, yeah. Like, he was a big Witcher 3 fan, and I can't blame him, I, I think The Witcher 3 is fantastic, but when he played Breath of the Wild, it's like, oh, you can actually, like, really... There's a lot of really nice gameplay, like, it feels good to play Breath of the Wild. Damn it. So I think that was more enjoyment for him, and even though Breath of the Wild was light on story, he, he said it didn't really matter because he just he enjoyed playing it. And, and that's kind of what I told him. I said, listen, when you go into Breath of the Wild, you gotta... ...make it your own adventure. Like, find stuff to do. Enjoy yourself. Don't... ...you know, don't wait for the game to tell you what's going on. Just look for it. Just go find stuff. And... ...play it how you want. And he did, and he said he enjoyed it. He got everything. Except all the Koroks, of course, but who the fuck did that? make him play Mother 3. I already told him about Mother 3. Like, he miss- he loves Chrono Trigger. Oh, wait, no. Wait, does he? I don't know if he's played Chrono Trigger. He's a big Final Fantasy fan. He replays, like, a Final Fantasy game every year. And... I don't remember if he's played Chrono Trigger. But he- he's played Final Fantasy 6, uh, multiple times. 7, 8, 9, 10. You know, he, he's into that stuff. Um, Xenoblade. Or Xenogears, sorry, Xenogears, Parasite Eve. But I've explained Mother 3 and Earthbound to him, and why he would like them. Chrono Cross, I think he said he rented Chrono Cross, and he didn't really like it. Like, he never finished it. And then I think he went back and finished it later. So, I think he's got good taste in games. He's a big Metal Gear fan. But, you know, the stuff he's been playing recently, you know, are the, like, Drake's Misfortune. <laughs> stuff like that. So yeah, it's kind of cool. I like to recommend games to people. That's one of the things I enjoy, like, when I... When I do see, like, say, my acquaintances, I'm not really all that... Like, I don't do a lot of social stuff. Not as much as I used to. You know, people grow. People go and do their own thing. But when I see some people at, like, Christmas parties or New Year's parties, they usually ask me for recommendations for games. I try to figure out what like, the best possible stuff would be. Like, okay, what do you like? Okay, you like Gears of War. Alright. <laughs> well, gotta figure that one out. Um... Have you tried more Gears of War? Yeah, or Doom, or, like, just a shooter, but, like, cover-based shooter.
It's like a fake Fanto. What's wrong with Gears of War? I... I like Gears of War, actually. I've played... most of that series, and... Oh, fuck that. I just wouldn't know who... I, I wouldn't know what games to recommend to someone who likes Gears of War, almost exclusively. Well, yeah, games with guns, obviously, but then you have to take into account the cover mechanic. Like, is that something that they like from Gears of War? Like, hey, do you like hiding as well as shooting, or just- do you like just shooting? Oh, Vanquish. Yeah, Vanquish is a fucking fantastic game. Titanfall 2. Alright, now you got some good suggestions. I mean, do it like Apex. Fifty Cent, Blood in the Sand. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me of that game's existence. How about the fact that there was a Riddick game that was actually good? Two of them? There were two good Riddick games? From Russia with Love is a Gears clone, they actually got Connery. Wait, did he do the voice for that? Did- did they really get old Sean Connery to do the voice of young James Bond in a video game? That's crazy. I can't believe they did that. And he's, like, not really even acting anymore. How the fuck much did they pay him? Dear God. Vinny, what's your favorite movie game? I gotta say Goldeneye. It's a cliché answer, yeah, but... I mean, there's some good Star Wars games, too. You want to say, uh, how about this Rogue Squadron 2, Rebel Strike? No. Rogue Leader, sorry, <laughs> that's the one. The one that launched with GameCube. What's your favorite video game movie? Um... It's a hard question to answer. I kind of think the Mario Brothers movie might be my favorite because of how fucking rewatchable and terrible it is. But also, like, the sets are really impressive and... It's just a... It's a shitty movie, but it's an anomaly. And also kind of... Kind of amazing to look at. Does Wreck-It Ralph count? I mean, Wreck-It Ralph is... Fantastic. It counts retroactively. I'd say. But no, not for what we're talking about. Mortal Kombat movie? I don't remember the Mortal Kombat movie. I've seen it. The original. The first one. I don't- I just don't remember it. How about Heath Thickscapades? I remember when that song was fucking everywhere. That song was like, played at my prom.
pretty cool hidden room. See that? Do you see that fat fucking butt? Just deflect any damage. Now now's the part where I try not to die. do a bad job at it. Definitely got hard. Someone just said, I never found the key in this level, and I gave up. God, don't tell me that. No, Wargroove isn't cancelled, necessarily. I was hoping to beat this in one go. Um... I wasn't gonna do a huge long, uh, a long Wargroove stream. I was just gonna do something kind of simple. Short. Just a couple, couple levels. I think this might be the way to go. Well, I don't know if this needs a two-parter. I'm, I'm kind of, like, almost done with it, I think. We'll see. We will see. I'll tell you what, if it's a two-parter, the second part is gonna be really lopsided. There's a room with three clocks. Okay, that's all I need to hear. I noticed that there was some stuff happening in a clock earlier.
Okay, well, I don't know. Whoa, whoa, something happened. Here's the... Here's two. Here's the treasure. I don't know. It could have been misinformation. They could have said three, but they meant two. It's possible. Two. There's one. <laughs> God damn it. Here's one. That's not good. These. Someone said there's a, a door that I missed. That was it. Well, this is fucking confusing. This door right here. No, not this one. The next one. This one. This is the one. No wonder that one person in chat could not find this fucking key. Okay, now I just don't die. That's the plan. Hey, I did it. God damn it. Why am I even... Welcome to Atlantic City. Motherfucker. Uh, there... are two full levels and two bosses left. Or maybe three bosses. The last level is long.
probably about an hour left. All right, so you know what? Eh, we'll, we'll just do it. Next time. And you know, I don't know, Day. I mean, uh, whoa, I'm talking to myself. That's right, you're talking to you. I am your subconscious, Jay. It's me, Jay. You should do more groove. Vinny, this is my least favorite voice you do. I got that not too long ago from someone saying that they didn't like the Blapkin voice. Someone said that this the bass line in this song sounds like Billie Jean. I hear it. Yeah, there's probably like an hour left. So you know what? Screw it. We'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. Sorry, everybody. I'm kind of feeling like I want to do some groove. So, um... If there's an hour left, and I've been very thorough with these levels to get all the treasure, then, um... You know, there will be, like, I'll probably end up having 45 minutes of war groove or, or 30 minutes, and I, I kind of want to play that. So... But, yeah, tomorrow... Tomorrow there will be more things, and I can finish Wario soon. And tomorrow will be Super Paper Mario. Alright, so take a quick moment to relax. And I will see you in a moment. I know this isn't a game for everybody to watch, but this is just for me. I just like playing it. I enjoy it. I want to play it. So if it's something that aligns with your interests, feel free to stay. And if not, I'll see you tomorrow. Be right back.